Consistency is not something you stumble upon by luck or talent. It is something you build, brick by brick, through daily repetition and deliberate effort. Every act of discipline rewires your brain to expect effort, not comfort. The human brain is not designed to hand you consistency as a gift. It must be earned through friction, discomfort, and choice. Every single time you act when you don't feel like it, you're training your nervous system to obey direction instead of emotion. That is how mental strength is formed, not by waiting for motivation, but by acting in spite of its absence. Your brain craves routine because it thrives on predictability. Every consistent action you take reduces uncertainty, quiets the noise of hesitation, and replaces chaos with clarity. The first few days of any new habit are war zones inside your mind because your neural circuits are being forced to change. But each time you repeat that action, neurons fire together, connections strengthen, and eventually the resistance fades. What once felt like struggle becomes instinct. Consistency is not about perfection. It's about the rewiring process that happens when you refuse to quit. People think motivation creates action, but the truth is rever, action creates motivation. Your brain releases dopamine not when you achieve, but when you move toward achievement. Every step forward, no matter how small, sends a signal to your brain that you are progressing. That chemical reward reinforces the behavior and makes it easier to repeat. So when you force yourself to stay consistent, you are literally teaching your brain to enjoy the process of persistence. You begin to crave the act of showing up, not the result itself. Every time you break consistency, you teach your brain that excuses are acceptable. Every time you push through, you teach it that discomfort is survivable. The more you repeat this lesson, the stronger your mental circuits become. It's not the goal that matters most, it's the training of your mind to act without waiting for perfect conditions. Life will never hand you a day where everything feels right. So discipline must become your stability when motivation fails. Consistency means doing what matters even when the spark is gone, because that's when it counts the most. Think of your brain as a muscle. Each repetition of a habit is a rep in the gym of discipline. The first few reps hurt, the resistance feels heavy, and the urge to quit is strong. But every rep strengthens the pathway, Every day of showing up builds endurance, and eventually it becomes effortless. You start to crave the rhythm, the predictability, the control. Consistency creates identity. You stop saying, I'm trying, and start saying, this is who I am. That shift changes everything. Discipline is not punishment. It's a form of self-respect. When you choose consistency, you're telling your brain that your goals are not negotiable. You're declaring that you value growth more than comfort. The brain listens to that declaration. It adapts. It begins to filter distractions, prioritize tasks, and reward focus. You're not fighting against your biology. You're training it. The repetition teaches your brain what matters. Over time, effort becomes your natural state. There will be days when fatigue wins, when the world feels too heavy, when your mind whispers to take it easy. Those are the moments that define your wiring. Every decision you make in those moments is a signal. Do you signal your brain to give up when it gets hard, or do you signal that you are capable of persistence? The brain doesn't care about words. It cares about actions. The only language it understands is repetition. Every consistent act says, this is who I am, and eventually your brain believes it. Consistency doesn't mean grand gestures. It's the small, invisible choices repeated daily. It's waking up at the same time, training your body, nourishing your mind, focusing your attention. It's doing the small things when no one is watching, because you understand that mastery is built in silence. Every tiny habit compounds into something powerful. The difference between those who succeed and those who don't is not intelligence or luckets who stayed consistent when it stopped being exciting. The process of forcing consistency feels uncomfortable because your brain loves comfort. It's wired to conserve energy, but comfort is the enemy of progress. 
Each time you resist that pull, you strengthen your control over your mind. You become the one giving the commands, not the one obeying impulses. Consistency is about reclaiming that control and proving to yourself that discipline, not emotion, runs your life. When you choose consistency, you're building trust with yourself. You're proving that your word means something. And once your brain learns that your promises are real, it stops doubting you. Confidence is not a feeling. It's the byproduct of kept promises. The more consistent you are, the more your brain learns that you are reliable. That reliability becomes self-belief and self belief becomes unstoppable momentum, so forcing yourself to be consistent is not about cruelty, it's about creation. You are creating neural pathways that define your future self. You are building a mind that can be counted on when everything else fails. The pain of repetition fades, but the strength it builds remains. Every morning you show up when you don't want to, every time you stay focused when distractions call, Every moment you act despite doubt, you are building the architecture of greatness. Consistency is not glamorous, but it is the quiet engine that drives every form of excellence the human mind is capable of. Discipline lives in your chemistry long before it shows up in your behavior. Every thought, every action, every burst of focus begins as a spark between neurons fueled by chemicals that decide how you feel and how far you go. Dopamine, norpinephrine, and serotonin are not abstract scientific terms. They are the invisible forces behind your motivation, persistence, and sense of control. When you understand them, you stop relying on willpower and start using biology as your greatest ally. The secret to daily discipline isn't a motivational quote. It's mastering the chemistry of your own brain. Dopamine is the molecule of pursuit, the signal that tells your brain, move towards something meaningful. It doesn't rise when you achieve your goal. It rises when you move toward it. That means real motivation is built through progress, not success. Every time you take a step forward, no matter how small, dopamine reinforces that action. It says, this is good, keep going. The more you repeat that cycle action, reward, action again, the stronger your internal motivation becomes. When you wait to feel motivated before acting, you're doing it backward. You act first and the chemistry follows. Discipline begins where dopamine is earned, not expected. Norpine, freen is the chemistry of alertness and focus. It rises when you begin a challenging task. It sharpens your mind, increases attention, and helps you lock onto what matters. But it doesn't appear automatically. It must be triggered through action. That's why the hardest part is starting. The first few minutes of work feel heavy because your brain hasn't yet produced the chemicals that make focus effortless. Once you begin, norpinephrine floods the system and momentum takes over. Discipline is the skill of starting before you feel ready, knowing your brain will catch up. Those who master this don't wait for clarity. They create it through movement. Serotonin follows effort. It's the molecule of calm satisfaction that arrives after completion. When you finish a task, no matter how small, serotonin tells your brain you did something valuable. It stabilizes mood deepens confidence, and resets the system for the next round of effort. Without serotonin, dopamine becomes restless and chaotic. You crave stimulation but never feel fulfilled. That's why people chase goals endlessly but never feel at peace. Discipline is not only about doing, it's about finishing. The act of completion gives your brain the closure it needs to sustain balance. When you close loops, you build emotional strength. These three chemicals form the foundation of your discipline system. Dopamine drives you to start, norpine, freen helps you focus, and serotonin in helps you feel rewarded enough to do it again tomorrow. Together, they create a loop of motivation and recovery that keeps your behavior aligned with your goals. The problem is that most people hijack this system. They seek dopamine through easy rewards, scrolling, snacking, or distractions, 
rather than progress. They rely on external stimulation rather than internal effort. Every time you chase cheap dopamine, you teach your brain that effort isn't necessary for reward. That's how inconsistency is born. To build true discipline, you must rewire how your brain earns reward. You must train it to release dopamine for effort, not outcome. Each time you push through resistance, remind yourself that this is where growth happens. That thought alone changes your neurochemistry. When you associate effort with satisfaction, you eliminate the need for external validation. Your motivation becomes self, generating. You're no longer chasing rewards. You're producing them. That is how disciplined people sustain long, term focus while others burn out. The brain adapts to what you feed it. If you give it instant rewards, it becomes addicted to ease. If you give it effort, based rewards, it becomes addicted to progress. You are not born disciplined or lazy. You are trained by the patterns of your chemistry. The moment you take control of those patterns, you take control of your life. When you wake up, when you start working, when you keep going through fatigue, every one of those actions is a message to your brain. You are teaching it what matters. Each repetition carves a deeper groove, turning deliberate effort into automatic behavior. Discipline is not about fighting your brain. It's about aligning with how it already works. You don't overcome biology. You cooperate with it. When you understand that motivation is chemical, you stop waiting for inspiration and start creating the conditions that trigger it. You hydrate, you move, you breathe deeply, you begin your work. Because each of those actions releases the very chemistry you need to sustain effort. You stop asking, how do I stay motivated? And start asking, how can I activate dopamine right now through progress? The beauty of this system is that it compounds. Every day you follow through, your brain remembers the chemical satisfaction that follows effort. The next time resistance appears, it recalls that reward and helps you start again. That's how consistency becomes automatic. Discipline stops being a battle and becomes a rhythm, a neurochemical symphony that moves you forward with purpose. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. Your brain was designed for progress, not comfort. It rewards the human who pursues challenge, not the one who avoids it. Every time you choose effort over ease, you're giving your brain exactly what it was made for. You're feeding it the chemistry of growth, resilience, and pride. This is how discipline is built, not through willpower, but through a precise understanding of your own biology. When you learn to control your chemistry, you no longer need to force yourself to act. You simply become someone who acts because your brain has learned to crave the process itself. Your environment is the silent architect of your discipline. It shapes your actions, your focus, and even your thoughts without you realizing it. The human brain is not designed to rely on willpower every day. It is designed to respond to cues, triggers, and context. Every sound, color, light, and object around you speaks to your subconscious mind. The more chaotic your surroundings are, the more friction your brain experiences, and the more friction you face, the weaker your consistency becomes. You cannot build strong habits in an environment that constantly pulls you in the opposite direction. If your surroundings do not align with your goals, your discipline will always feel like a struggle against gravity. The truth is, your environment can either drain your energy or fuel it. The brain conserves energy by following the path of least resistance. That means if distractions are within reach, they will win. If your tools for progress are buried, you'll hesitate. Discipline isn't just about fighting temptation. It's about designing your world so that success becomes the easiest option. The people who appear highly disciplined are not superhuman. They simply have fewer temptations around them. They structure their lives so that focus feels natural, not forced. They control their inputs, their space, and their schedule so the brain doesn't have to constantly negotiate between comfort and commitment. Every environment holds power over behavior. Walk into a clean, organized space and your mind feels lighter, clearer, and more capable. 
Walk into chaos and your brain immediately divides its attention, even if you think you can handle it. The clutter around you isn't just physical, it's neurological. Every visible distraction demands micro, decisions that silently drain your willpower. Every object that reminds you of something undone or misplaced adds mental weight. That is why mastering your surroundings is not about neatness, it's about protecting your cognitive energy. A focused space builds a focused mind. Your environment also determines your triggers for action. When your workspace is consistent, your brain associates that location with a specific behavior. Step into that space, and the neural circuits for productivity activate automatically. That is not coincidence, it is conditioning. The brain links environments with routines. The same principle applies to your morning rituals, your workouts, your eating patterns. If you perform the same behavior in the same setting repeatedly, your brain stops asking, should I, and simply begins. You no longer rely on motivation. You rely on environmental programming. That is how lasting consistency is formed. Your surroundings also include the people you allow into your daily orbit. Human behavior is contagious. Your brain mirrors the energy, tone, and habits of those around you through neural imitation. Spend enough time with undisciplined people, and you start to absorb their patterns without realizing it. Spend time around focused, purposeful individuals and your brain calibrates upward. The people you expose yourself to are not neutral. They are either raising or lowering your standard of discipline. Your social environment is as critical as your physical one. Protect it like your progress depends on it, because it does. Noise, lighting, temperature, even digital environment, all of it matters. Bright screens at the wrong time trick your brain into alertness when it needs rest. Constant notifications train your mind for distraction instead of depth. A dark, quiet space at the right time tells your brain it's time to create. Every sensory input is a signal. The disciplined person doesn't fight these signals. They master them. They understand that every cue, every sound, every glance influences behavior. They take control of what their brain is exposed to, knowing that small adjustments compound into massive changes in consistency. Your phone, your desk, your routine, all of them can either support you or sabotage you. If your phone is always near, your focus will always be split. If your desk is cluttered, your mind will reflect that chaos. If your environment constantly reminds you of comfort, your brain will chase it. But when your space reflects order, clarity, and purpose, your mind begins to mirror those same qualities. You move from reacting to creating, from distraction to direction, from chaos to command. Discipline doesn't thrive in randomness. It thrives in structure. Every boundary you set is an act of respect toward your goals. Removing what distracts you is just as powerful as adding what motivates you. A single decision to create a structured environment removes hundreds of future temptations. That's the secret disciplined people understand. They design their surroundings to make success automatic. They make the right action easy and the wrong one inconvenient. That's how you win long before the day even starts. When your environment aligns with your purpose, you stop wasting energy on resistance. You wake up knowing exactly what comes next because your world cues you to act. You step into your space and the behavior follows naturally. You don't argue with yourself. You don't delay. You don't doubt. You just do. That's the power of environmental alignment. It replaces mental struggle with instinctive execution. If you want to change your life, don't start with willpower. Start with what surrounds you. Your environment is either a battlefield or a blueprint. It will either drain you or drive you. Every object, every sound, every person sends a message to your mind about what kind of day you're about to have. Make that message clear, powerful, and aligned with the person you want to become. Because when your environment supports your discipline, consistency stops being effort. It becomes your nature. 